Greetings and welcome to Arevna Den. I'm Michael Hassenfang, and this is a second episode entitled How Soon Is Now, How Long Is Then? Where to begin on this episode, I believe, would be this thing. Um, <clears throat> I apologize for my first introduction episode because I did have this hooked up and it was on a stand right here. However, I didn't realize that I actually was using the microphone in the camera yonder over there. So it was very airy, it was very quiet, you had to turn it up to hear it, and hopefully this will come in better. I did have it on a stand, but I decided to use this as a reminder that I need to perpetually change it to the blue every time I start up one of these episodes. So this will be in my face. I guess it still looks a little professional now, so we'll be doing that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got my coffee too, so I'm gonna start trying to do something a little different as well within these episodes. Um, now that we're on the topics of what is going down in the world today, and going into Bible scripture and stuff, and that is to pray, but also to take communion. I try to take communion. <clears throat> as much as I can. I'm sorry, I have a bit of a dry throat today. Um, I try to do it every day, but I just, life gets in the way and you leave and you go to work and it's like, ah, oh, I forgot to do it. Um, but I think for these shows, I'm going to do it for any of you who are at home and have a communion pack or use bread and wine. I think I'm going to move to wine myself on it. And it's just sort of a, a community reminder that we should partake in communion to remember what the Lord has done for us. And so I will be doing this now if any of you wish to partake. Actually, I'm going to pray first. Um, Heavenly Father, please give us the insight and discernment with these videos, because I do understand that a lot of this is based off my own perception, my own reading of the scriptures. And though some of it uh, may be Holy Spirit uh, indwelled, like shown to me, it may not be truth um, <clears throat> on a lot that aren't. And I'm just trying to give insight as to what is going down today. Please give the viewers insight as well too and discernment to understand that it may be wrong and I could be incorrect and this may not be spirit-led, though I'm trying to be spirit-led and hopefully this will bring them closer to you, not to some end goal based on human desires or human needs but you are the ultimate end in this situation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to take this. Now, if any of you wish to partake as well, or if you want to start ordering these, you can get these almost anywhere. You can get them off Amazon. Though it doesn't really matter, I suppose, where you get them, just as long as you partake in remembrance of him. And another reason why I'm doing this is because one of the topics on this series is why we take communion. And I thought I might as well just start um, right out of the chute and do it so that we can, those who are watching now or those who see that video in the future will be able to partake in it as well. So, um, but that is not today's topic. Today's topic, we are starting off uh, just right with the bang. And I thought about this long and hard. How should I do this? How should I make the topics? Should I gradually put them into this process? And while I was at work, I just took some time because, you know, there, there was nothing much to do that day. And I wrote a list of things. Like, oh, what are the topics? I'll just write down the things I, that I started off with, um, the things that I found interesting the first and just went down the list. And um, while I was setting up to do these shows, I realized that this actually, this list seems to be sort of in the numerology, like the, the itinerary of what we should be, of how I should be presenting it. Um, and again, I don't have notes. I just have little things like this, little knickknacks like, oh, let's do this. And so we're going to be starting off with the first one, and that is... Uh, how soon is now? How long is then? And of course, that is sort of a uh, tongue-in-cheek joke of the Smith song, How Soon Is Now. 
but it is in relation also to what is going down these days and why has it been years like just we thought it was going to be days or weeks when this first happened back in 2020 and that this sting operation so called by the military or whatever god was going to be doing was going to be just kicked off and um you know within a matter of weeks maybe months possibly this thing would be done and over with and here we are years later but within that time we've also had a growth we've had this separation from the world many of us i'm sure many of you have too where god has put you in a situation or a scenario where you are just away from people whether that had to do with just the loss of friends or ailments that kept you incapacitated from going out and seeing people or seeing the world or just uh, even church itself. Your, your church was estranged and it didn't feel right and you just stopped going because it wasn't speaking. It wasn't giving you the edification that you needed. Um, uh, just lots of things. Loss of job. There was a change. There was a process where a lot of us were just shut off from everything in life, everything in existence. And it was a cave dwelling season. It was a, a time to, you know, grow in the Lord, but also be a pioneer within this change and be a path setter, paving the way for when this finally all goes down and the people come running, you will be ready to give them an answer as to everything that's going to be exposed, everything that's going to be flipped over on its head, everything that will pretty much a new way of life. <clears throat> And I'm not saying that subtly. I mean, this is there's going to be many major changes, and there's going to be a fierce battle before then. <clears throat> One, I think that'll be more spiritual, but it's so spiritual that it'll work its way into the natural, and we will see a lot of it, a lot of it being taken effect, uh, as I'm sure most of you have already seen. If, if you haven't seen it now, you're you're hiding your head in the sand. There's been so much that has been going on in the political and the judicial in the natural things of weather. And I mean, just it's just been an onslaught of stuff since 2020. It's been ridiculous or since COVID, I should say. COVID pretty much was the starting point. And it makes you wonder why is the enemy fighting so hard? In the old days, it used to be just... <clears throat> subdued or subverted it was it was very quiet and like uh, hidden away and the masks were on and they were doing it with smiling faces at you and you just ate their pudding you know just lapped it up and no one was paying attention but now as you can plainly see quite visibly the masks are just completely off there's no more mask what what you are seeing is exactly who they are and they're being exposed um for who they are even the ones that have their mask on, they, they still, they, they can't, they can't hide it. It's just, it's becoming so obvious. And it makes you wonder why the enemy is trying so hard to fight and to push and to just beat you down into the ground. And I think a lot of it has to do with what is coming. And not just what I think, but what some of the other prophets have said, and also what scripture has said, which is why we're going to be going into it a little bit today as well. Some hidden things, which I think are slowly being revealed today, because I'm sure as some of you know, who do read the Bible, that has happened throughout all of history. Uh, the Lord would say something and, you know, be written down in the Bible, or there'd be a certain story to tell, and it would be right there in your face, but like... You know, centuries later, that story is revealed into the light for what it truly was. The greatest example of this is Jesus Christ with the Old Testament and New Testament. Uh, Chuck Missler said it best in that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. God is always giving us puzzles and mysteries to solve and it is the honor of kings to search them out. Now, that is literally a bible quote i'm sure i'm not saying it correctly depending on what bible you're reading but that's more or less it he's he's giving us mysteries he's giving us puzzles to solve we're supposed to uncover them and this one of the how long is then part and also how soon is now is uh, i think one of the mysteries to solve <clears throat> and it's also one of the reasons why the enemy is coming against us because there's uh, a change coming and a power coming that is going to absolutely stomp out the enemy. And again, 
Uh, I, I shouldn't say I'm not talking about the rapture because I kind of am, but at the same time, I'm not. We who are on this planet now are still going to be around. There's a lot of prophets that are talking about that the glory is coming. And what they mean by that is that there's going to be an upper room scenario coming. In other words, the fire resting on the heads, us speaking in tongues, us healing the sick, raising the dead, stuff like that. But it's going to be on a worldly scale. There are many prophets who had dreams of Jesus coming back and the glory is going to be dropped on us. But there's going to be a lot of confusion and a lot of sorrow based on that. And I think I understand why. <clears throat> and if you listen to any other prophets like um, Midnight Cry with Deborah, or there's another one called Shirley Lice, and I like her, but she's, she's in the prophet world. She's not very well known, I think. And she has been speaking on a lot of things, which has kind of made me raise an eyebrow to biblical scripture and be like, have we been reading this right? <clears throat> now, before I get into that, I'm going to go into the how soon is now part. Um, because for the past three years, we have been hearing nothing but now. Now this is going to happen. Soon this is going to happen. This is about to happen. You know, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm doing this. Now is the time. This is the hour. And again, years go by and it's like, did I, did I misinterpret that? Did I hear that right? Did you actually come and I just wasn't listening? Was this prophecy pertaining to something that I thought was going to happen and it actually wasn't? It was actually speaking about this? Like, what's going on? There's been a lot of confusion. And the way that this is being set up, so I heard from many prophets, uh, again, is that this is going to be a one snap trap. Like, all the pebbles are being lined up very meticulously, very slowly, very tediously, and painfully for a lot of us. And at the right moment, once everyone is gathered together, the snap happens and the action goes into play and everything goes down at once. Or think about it this way. <coughs> Again, I'm sorry, I have a very dry throat. It's COVID. No, I've always had a dry throat. I smoked cloves back in my 20s and the fiberglass from the filters. Those of you who smoke clove know what it is. Got in there and now I just have a constant cough. Always. I've had it for 25 years. It's not goof. It's just something I've had. And anytime it's even mildly dry, I get the cough. So that's what it is. Think about it this way, though. Sorry for running off on that. Is that uh, when you play dominoes and you lay down a track or you set it up, it's just tediously and mind-numbingly set up slowly one by one by one and you better make very well sure none of those are on a crooked or unleveled floor everything needs to be perfect otherwise the thing's going to tip over and the whole thing come crashing down and you got to start over from scratch well that's kind of how i think the lord is doing it to get everyone together in the same spot so that and i'm not saying the same spot as in like they're all going to be in you know like switzerland at the same time or so and i'm just saying everything needs to be perfectly aligned for this to go down the trap needs to be set for everyone regardless of where they are to be snapped and so the the domino is being set one by one by one tediously meticulously very slowly and then when the last one finally gets set down that is the first one to get flicked and from there on the thing comes tumbling down in a matter of seconds that's pretty much what is going down we are in the domino setting phase <clears throat> and once it gets flicked things are going to happen at such a rapid pace it is going to make your head spin now we have seen <clears throat> god sounds like i have a double voice today we have seen um much of this happened in 2023. A lot of the whistleblowers are coming through. And I think it's going to be ramped up more and more and more until finally it's just it's going to be just a, a brain explosion of stuff being exposed, of, of stuff being revealed, of people being arrested, of just everything happening. It's 
some people have said that even in a, a day, like the big snap is going to happen like in one day. You're going to go to bed one day and you're going to wake up and it's going to be just completely different. You're going to be in a completely different world. Like what happened? Now, I don't know if they meant that in a literal sense, um, like how the Bible explains in the blinking of an eye, it'll boom, boom, and it's, it's changing, you know, the people will be gone. Um, or if it's going to be like in the heaven perspective of looking at us, like, you know, it's, it's going to like overnight, it's, it's going to be so fast that it'll feel like it just happened instantaneously compared to the years that we have been going through this grueling agony. Either way, how soon is now seems to dwell a little bit more on God's timing, not ours. There was and I don't think it was one prophet. I think it was a few prophets, and I can't remember the names. I can't remember who was who I was listening to. I will try and start taking notes so I can start giving these prophets names so that you can go and see for yourself. Because I'm going to start trying to tag their sites, you know, their Rumble sites or their YouTube sites. You can go and watch and listen to them as well, too. But there was a few prophets that said, whenever the Lord said it was now in their prophetic words, like a year or so, or however long it took later, it was, it, it came to pass, but it was on the day that they revealed their word. So it's, it's weird. So if like the God said, today I'm doing this, and it was back in like March 3rd of 2021. Well, in March 3rd of 2022, it actually happened on the same day, but it was like years apart. So we need to start paying attention to stuff like that as well, which I thought was pretty interesting where, you know, if God was speaking on like a particular calendar on this day, this is going to happen. Well, it didn't happen that day in our realm, but it did happen that day in a future setting. I guess that's why it's prophetic. Um, so it's kind of cool how the Lord works in those ways as well, too. So we need to start paying attention to certain prophetic words when they're being said. And especially if the Lord says now on this particular day or this week or this hour, or it's like, you know, it, it may not even be that day, but on that hour, that hour when he prophesied it, it happens that hour later. I mean, yeah, it's, it's really interesting how prophetic words work in that sense. So whenever you hear the word now and you start getting agitated that, you know, you're, you're watching for it to happen right now and it doesn't, that's probably why. Think of it from a heavenly perspective. What is God saying on that particular day? Not exactly that particular year. So, and the second thing that um, I'm going to bring up is going to start up a lot of controversy. I, I think a lot of people are going to be very um, probably mad at me for phrasing it this way. And I personally never thought of it in this sense until within this last year, I'd, I'd say maybe, maybe longer than that. But uh, after what people like uh, Midnight Cry with Deborah and Shirley Lice were saying, it's starting to make a little bit more sense is that the dead in Christ will be raptured but we are going to remain here for the last harvest until the last person is saved the last christian is saved that comes to faith truly faithfully and then after that we're raptured up um there's there's a few scriptures that actually say this and it seems that it's right in our face plain as day but it, it, it was hidden because of the way it was phrased. And I'll go over that now. <clears throat> I'm going to read. Um, uh, First Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. And there's a few here that kind of specify this, but... Um, you need to pay attention to how it's being said. And he goes on to say, But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. He's talking about the dead in Christ. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. 
so he's talking about Jesus coming, God bringing them with him like he did Jesus. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto, er, unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven with a shout, and the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall raise first. Then we which are alive shall remain or shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. It's not talking about heaven, to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall be with the Lord. Or ever be with the Lord, sorry. Um Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We're comforting people with these words that are ignorant about those who have died already. There's, there's something in there that got my attention after Shirley Lice gave a bunch of her prophetic words about Jesus coming and we will see him and the glory will fall on us and we will be able to do all these wonders because <coughs> <coughs> I guess today is not the day for me to do videos sorry for all the coughing guys we need to remember that Jesus is not coming to rapture a church who's weak and beaten down and depressed and worn out and tired and exhausted and just given up God is not in this for the act of performing a disappearing trick like a magician he is coming back for a bride without spot or blemish of who the gates of hell will not prevail against and uh, I, I heard one um, preacher speak well, gates don't move we're supposed to be on the move it's like no actually gates do move they either swing open or they swing shut and it's our job to prevent those doors from swinging open from those who are trying to push them out so they can enter into our world the gates of hell will not prevail against us that is who jesus is coming back for and in order for that to happen i think we have to amp up our game up the ante per se and start doing certain things declaring decreeing praying speaking out for what god is trying to do today as opposed to just letting the enemy run rampant over us and get out of rapture rugs and thinking that we're just going to be out of here oh it doesn't matter just let them stampede over this we're going to be out of here anytime soon no no we're supposed to be pushing them back and we're supposed to be prevailing and i think part of this is christ's return us waiting for him to set up the last domino and when it happens he comes back and drops down his glory to us where we can start speaking in tongues raising the dead healing the sick spreading the word all that stuff um but i think as he comes and drops his glory he is taking up those den christ glory with him and we will see it we will experience it the world will acknowledge that and those who are glorified or have the spirit fall upon them have that uh, upstairs room scenario happen to them will now lead the way into this last season harvest <clears throat> it's the word then that caught my attention in that scripture for the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God the dead in Christ shall raise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and we have been reading this forever and ever and ever and we tied it to the scripture of in the blinking of an eye and in fact i have it right here for first corinthians behold i tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable comma and we shall be changed for this perishable body must be put on 
<clears throat> or must put on the imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality i'm i'm feeling these are two different scenarios um it's the same thing but it's they're mutually exclusive they're two different things that happen and we need to remember that the dead in Christ rise first and we follow them. And most people say, well, we all go in the blinking of an eye. No, that doesn't say that. It says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. That's, that's how we go. That's not when we go. That's two different things. We go in the blinking of an eye. When is that? Oh, it's right after the dead in Christ rise. No, it isn't. It's not directly after it. Then we which are alive shall and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. How long is then? Is it a nanosecond? Is it one second? Is it a minute? Is it an hour? Is it a day? Is it a week? Is it a month? Is it a year? Is it a decade? Is it a century? How long is then? It doesn't specify. Behold, I tell you a mystery. This is something that we've, I think, misunderstood. For a long time though the rapture itself is mysterious it's a power of god we all get raised up but every christian knows that we go it's not technically a mystery but i think this is something we are going to be seeing soon <laughs> now it's, it's something we're going to be seeing relatively soon within this time frame of what is going down in this day and age is that Christ is going to come back. We're going to see it. We're going to see the dead in Christ raised. People are going to acknowledge it, and they are going to be clawing the door down to try and get answers from those who are saved, from those who are awake, from those who are aware of what is going on. And Midnight Cry with Deborah goes into this too, where she had a dream, and it, it may be other prophets may have had a dream from what the story she told. I could be wrong, but um, she had a dream <coughs> where... She saw Jesus in the clouds. He was riding in a chariot and, you know, going through the clouds and saying, come with me. And and those of us who were here were all like, wait, wait, what, what, what's going on? You know, and she was stuck here and she called her mom who was alive at the time because she was a prophetess as well, too. And uh, asked, what what did what does this mean? Why why did he come to show himself and then leave us here? And she's like, I've, I have no idea. Um, it seemed confusing to a lot of Christians. And Shirley Lice also said it as well, too, where, you know, um, the dead in Christ, you know, uh, well, before she said that, she's like, you know, we, we will be raising the dead. You know, I will be coming. I will be giving you the glory. I will be stowing miracles and wonders to you all. You will be healing the sick. You will be raising the dead. And I was like, okay, that's, that's, that's cool. We'll be raising the dead. But then as her prophecies went on she started changing up the verbiage she was like in, i will be coming to raise the dead in christ the dead in christ will be raised i'm coming to re i am coming to raise the dead and um it started to get me thinking i'm like he's coming back to raise the dead and then he's going and all of us are here going what just happened and i think that's what it means half of us will see people go going up or being raptured, um, the dead coming back alive, and they go, but we don't, I think it'll be a lot of confusion for a lot of people. And they're like, I, I, I don't understand what happened. It's like, well, I think what it is, is that's their time to go. That was the dead in Christ raising. Uh, the sound of the trumpet came, the dead in Christ went up, and we will go with them at a later time. But at the moment right now we need to be changed with the glory that is coming upon us because it's last harvest time there is a big last harvest season that needs to be done to save all these people and once the billion soul harvest is finished however long that takes some people like cat care say it, it's going to be another hundred years or so before this happened before you know the dead in christ raise 100 years last person in christ gets saved then we go up, then the tribulation happens. Um, <clears throat> now, there may be some confusion, like, um, you know, the, the dead Christ rays, will we see them 
Is that one of the things that, that we will catch and get confused as to why we didn't go with him? Or do we just see Jesus and nobody sees the dead rise? And we're even more confused. Like, what, what was, what did he just, why did he do that? Um, but I think Matthew explains it a, a little bit. Um, and I think it's, I almost got a little bit of a chuckle when, when I read this. Um, speaking after Jesus rose from the dead on Resurrection Sunday, it also says the tombs also were opened. This is Matthew 27, 52 through 53. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. This is not going in the blinking of an eye as we would, you know, think in our minds that we're going to be just gone. Um, you know, no time to hang around and have a coffee. These people rose from the dead, walked out of their tombs, and then decided to go to the city to see people. Now, I don't think it was, it, it said, and they appeared too many. I don't think it was just random people. I think maybe they did it in the Jesus perspective, which I, I, I got a few questions. If these were the souls of the dead going up with Jesus and they haven't had their glorified bodies yet, because so far only Jesus has his glorified body in heaven, everyone else's spirit in nature. Were these beings transparent? Did they glow, you know, have the blue line like a, like a Star Wars ghost? Were they complete blue, like the Disney's Haunted Mansion ghosts? Were they solid? Did they have, like, you know, like, can you touch them? Um, me guessing that they were spirit, probably not, which is probably why most people thought that they were ghosts or that, that they, you know, appeared to many and they did see them as dead. But I also think that maybe they, they did a Jesus thing, like walking through the door, literally, or just appearing in the room, like they were able to teleport in. And I think they spoke to family members. I think they were actually mentioning to them, hey, you know, Jesus is the way. Just here to let you know that. I don't know how, it doesn't say how long they stayed. Um, I'm guessing it was just for that night or maybe that hour, or a couple minutes, whatever it was, people saw him, they paid attention to it, and then they went up with Christ. And I'm thinking when Jesus comes, that's going to be the same scenario. Maybe people might not stick around and talk a little bit, but we'll, we'll see them go. And I think a lot of people will be confused on that and wondering what is going on. Well, at the same time, the glory is falling on our heads and we're stuck here um, to finish the last harvest. So I, I know it sounds very weird, very kind of bizarre, but I'm tying in what scripture says to the various words of what I heard the prophets say. Um, and it, it just seems to, it seems to me that this is what's going to be happening. This is going to be their reward that then in Christ goes while, while we have our work to do. And once that's done, then we, which are alive shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall be ever with the Lord. And I think that is what the true wedding feast is is that we will be with him in the clouds. We will watch a tribulation happen from down below. And once that's done and over with, we ride back with him for the judgment and the thousand year reign, of course. Um, there's, there's a period, a time in between the dead in Christ and us going that I think is going to be the game changer. And this is what the enemy is fighting so hard against is because we will now have our boot on their neck during this time. This is what I was saying in the first videos, you know, how God is trying to restore it, not really to Garden of Eden conditions, but to how we were supposed to live underneath God, you know, doing what he says, obeying what he, you know, um, wanted us to do or, you know, obeying what he said, um, <clears throat> letting him be the provider, not this Babylonian worldly system. Not to say that there's not going to be money, but it's just we need to look to him for a provision, for our supply, for our substance, for our life um, in general, 
our life, but just our way of life as well. Through him, not struggling tooth and nail to claw our way through this Babylonian system of uh, just tedious work while these, and, and I, I know I'm talking classism here, but it's not really. It's just where these certain people, and I'm going to use the phrase 1%, though I'm sure there's a lot of good people who are 1%, but there's just, there's some people that just hoard and hoard and hoard and they take it all for themselves. I'm talking about people like the global elite who stash all the food, who take all the wealth, who take all the money, just take everything from us, want all the power, and just, we're just the peons, all right? And do not get me wrong. I think there's a lot of really good, rich people. And when the turning of the tables happen, all the wealth from these evil elites, the ones who were Luciferian, will be taken from them and given back to the people who can steward it well and use it for the glorification of God. And that is the one thing that I know definitely that I would love to do. Um, I have investments in certain things that certain prophets have talked about uh, that if they're correct and if they heard the Lord correctly, uh, hopefully during this time, I'll just be multi, 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 multi millionaire. And if that goes through, I would love to just give as much of it as I can to certain projects like Elijah streams, to certain prophets, help certain family members, certain friends, um, do things like, I don't know if you've heard of Samaritan's Purse, where they give animals to children in Africa, I'll just probably buy the whole thing and just <laughs> start growing farms over there. Uh, and it's also for your wealth and your security too. It's I'm not trying to speak into the prosperity gospel, don't get me wrong, but the Lord wants you healthy. He wants you happy. He wants you, you know, using this for his kingdom, you know, and for also for your security and for your well-being for your family as well too. If I had millions and millions of dollars, I I don't even think I'd, I'd probably touch 10% of that, probably less, way less than, than that just for myself. I'd probably use as much as a, as I could to build businesses to get more revenue in so I can then take that and use that for distribution to better things to improve the kingdom of God. And I think there's going to be many, many other people who are going to steward that well. And not only that, but also be in a position of government, to be in a judicial system, to be the leaders, the rulers during this time who will do it justly. There's not going to be any more alphabet, you know, agencies taking over and, you know, kicking us to the ground. That's going to be done and over with. This is going to be a new time, a new era. And... The devil is fighting excruciatingly hard against it, and we need to be aware of that, and we need to be ready for it, because there is a dark time coming. It will not last long, okay? <laughs> Again, <laughs> how soon is now? But it won't last long. It's going to be flipped over on its head. We need to plow through that. We need to understand that, though it's looking bad, though it looks like the enemy is winning, it is a trap. That is being set up for them. We need to be aware of this. There are many people I know, including very close family members, that all they see is the bad. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And it's like, God's not coming. It's like, just wait. Hold on and see. This is all going to just get kicked right on its head. This is happening for a reason. One, to wake up the sleeping world, which also includes many Christians who are not aware of any of this. They're not awake to it. Many of them don't even want to hear it because I'm tying the name Trump to it. Oh, that's what they, they suffer from such insane TDS, Trump derangement syndrome, that they absolutely hate and despise the idea of him coming back. And they will thwart even God himself because of this. And they're not paying attention to it. And even though Trump is not our savior, he is, again, one of the tools God is using. His anointed person at this time, his David and his Cyrus, where he came in, he was a raging bull, as what many of the prophets said. But during his second term, which will happen, he's coming back a humbled man and a servant to God. Watch. Wait and see and watch. And you will, you will be shocked by this new leader that you see before you. And... It's, yeah, it's just going to be intense. They are going to pull out all the cards, like all the stops. They're like, you, this thing in Hawaii, I'm one of the people who, um, who agree this, this was, this was not, this was not a, this was not a wildfire. This was, I mean, come on, 
Have you seen some of the photos? Have you seen like, I mean, the, the way, the way it spread, the way it hit cars on the street where there, there's nothing that can burn it, but everything is just incinerated. It looks like an atomic bomb went off and I'm not saying it was a bomb. I'm just saying there's, there's other nefarious ways to do this. Um, and this is going to be just the start of one of many things that they're going to try and do. It's going to be another COVID, um, or, uh, like disease, something that's going to be coming out again that's going to be way worse they're, they're going to try and you know push it on us just pray declare and decree that it be pushed back on them it's going to boomerang back on them everything they're going to do <laughs> I can't even talk right everything they are going to do from this point out is going to look nefarious and evil and bad but it's going to boomerang back on them and you be in agreement with god on that you declare and decree that you say this is not touching me this is not touching my family get yourself some I know I'm going way off on the wall on this. Go get yourself some holy oil. I got one for house and, you know, things. I have another which has frankincense and myrrh in it for anointing people with. I do this daily myself, too. Um, yeah, just put it over your household like you like the Jews did with the blood of the lamb. Put, put it over your doorpost. Say that nothing's touching my house. Nothing's getting in. Nothing's, you know, going to phase anyone in this family. We're going to be healthy. We are going to be secure. And God is going to protect us during these dark times. As short as they may be, they're going to be uber super dark. So get ready for it and then get ready for the big bang that's going to happen afterwards. And again, I, I could be wrong. This is just my own interpretation of what I read in the Bible and from what I've heard other prophets say. I've just I've came to this conclusion within the last year or so. And it could be I could be totally wrong. Maybe the dead in Christ won't raise. But there's one thing that they're all in agreement on is that the glory is coming. The upper room session that's going to happen on a worldly scale is coming at the pivotal point during all of this. And we need to be aware and awake and ready for it. Um, and that's, I guess, where I will leave it. There are some other things in this show that I didn't clarify in the first video, <clears throat> which I'm going to do from now on as well, too. Uh, I'm going to start certain things at the end of each session. Sounds weird, but yeah. Uh, one of them is naming off certain prophets or sites to go to, recommendations. And this one for this episode is called Watchmen on the Wall. And they are like Elijah streams, if any of you have watched it. But what they do, what he, I'm sorry, what he does, it's literally one person, I believe, is he just gives off prophetic words or devotionals or good uplifting um, words from pastors, prophets, stuff like that. Each and every day, he does about four or five of them. Um, and you could go and start off there if you want, kind of slowly being uplifted by what he says before you get too heavy into the meat and bones of something like Elijah streams which goes on for like an hour and a half watching on the wall is like you know like around 10 minutes max usually they're about five minute clips so definitely check him out uh in the link below and i also have book recommendations and the one that i would start off with obviously the bible you always want to start off with the bible you know go go to the gospels and then you know once you do that maybe check out some of the the pauline you know writing or you know go back into the new testament um there's lots of recommendations. Each person has their own thing on where in the Bible to best start. So obviously, I'm going to skip the Bible because that's the first and foremost all the time. So we all know you, you need to read the Bible. Maybe get a Gideon's. Uh, a little Gideon's New Testament, you know. I used to ride the bus to work every day and read this. It's, it's great. It's a good starting point. Setting that aside, the next book that I would recommend and it's not this thick, is C.S. Lewis, Mere Christianity. This is not Mere Christianity. This is like nine books. So it's it's pretty thick. Mere Christianity is probably like, is like that. You know, it's a very small book. It didn't even start off as a book. It started off as clips during World War II that he did on the radio um, broadcasting for the people of England, which he then later turned into a book. And for those of you who are having trouble finding your faith or delving kind of more deep into apologetics, um, I would highly recommend C.S. Lewis. He is one of the greatest apologetic writers that I know of. Um, and he didn't start off that way. He was an atheist. Uh, many of you may know his name because he wrote the Chronicles of Narnia. 
and his friend at the time, J.R.R. Tolkien, who did Lord of the Rings, um, gave him a challenge to say, hey, if you think that God is incorrect, go to the Bible and try and refute God through what you find. And in the process of Lewis doing this, he became a Christian. And from then on, he was like one of the greatest writers of all time for the Christian faith, at least as, as far as I see him. So definitely start there. Good reading. And I think that's it. I'm going to take one more peek at my notes again, because I'm new at this and I just wanted to make sure that there's nothing else here. No, there's, there's other things here, but I'll save those for later dates. And as you see the, the quote at the beginning of this clip changed, I'm going to try and do that for each one in relation to the topic at hand. I'm keeping Ephesians 612 as the headline, the logo to a Revenant Den, which I will explain more, I believe in episode seven, which goes into the spiritual warfare. So, um, and I will also explain the, the picture at the beginning and my logo that I made for it as well too, which has very hammer horror vampire feels to it. So that, that'll all make sense once we get to episode seven. Until then, hang on. And if you made it this far and you didn't want to throw up or run away screaming from listening to everything I said, then congratulations, you made it through my insanity. I tried to start with the most intense thing first so that you know exactly where I'm coming from, what we're preparing ourselves for and to get ready for it. And from here on in, it should take possibly lighter notes um, and you'd be able to fall into it a little bit easier but I, I wanted to start off with the most intense thing that I was going to say first and not to save the best for last or maybe some people would think the worst for last I want you to see where I'm coming from and to know where I'm going with this and uh, hopefully I will catch you next week I'm going to try and put these out every single Saturday or Sunday uh, one clip at least if I have time, maybe some nuggets throughout the week, but I highly doubt it because I'm very busy lately. So until then, um, God bless you. May the Lord protect you and heal you of all your ailments and um, surround you with angels during this time and give you discernment and awakening to all that is going down because we desperately need you during this time. Um, there's many prophets who are begging for our nation, the world, but those in our nation especially to wake up because from here is going to be the pivotal point where we branch out and going to awaken the world from the prosperity that we were supposed to have and blessed with with the founding of this nation but has been taken away by the enemy and we're going to get it back and we're going to do massive, major, miraculous and marvelous things in the days ahead. So... Uh, hopefully I will catch you then. Take care. Uh, just a quick note. I want to apologize to everyone today. I had a little piece of white fuds in my beard that was dangling and I didn't even notice until I started mixing down this video. So yeah, fun. Hopefully that's not too much of a distraction for you, but I'll try to catch those in the future. Usually before I come on, I'm cleaning stuff in here and getting it all prepped up and stuff and throwing away things and pieces of paper and, you know, knickknacks and toys that the girls leave around and so uh, probably just got some junk in my face there so um yeah yeah it looked a little disgusting <laughs> hopefully it wasn't too too uh too annoying so that's it i will catch you next week uh, much love and take care god bless